In this guide, I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 10 via an external SSD to make your MacBook Pro run really well. And this is the best method of running Windows 10, in my experience. Check it out right here. All four of the ports are in use and it's supercharged. So, hope you enjoy the guide and enjoy the show. So first up to get the show on the road, you need a copy of Windows 10. So I'm typing into Google Windows 10 ISO. Usually the first link is the image and you need to select the appropriate edition of Windows 10. Here I'm using May 2019. I've previously used October 2018 in the past and it hasn't worked. So make sure if May 2019 is no longer available, drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to update you with the one that's working for me. All right, Windows 10. Next up, we're going to be downloading a piece of software called Win2 USB. And there is a free version, so that's good for you. Just download that. Next up, I'm going to be launching Bootcamp Assistant, which will allow me to install the latest versions of the Windows 10 drivers for my computer. So I'll go into the Actions menu on the top left, download Windows support software, and just save it to my desktop. This process will take a couple of minutes. Now, once those files have been downloaded, we're going to actually need a copy of Windows 10 to install Windows 10 on the USB. So I'm going to be using a virtual machine called Parallels, and that will allow me to run Windows 10 on a Mac to install it on the USB. Now, if you haven't set up a Windows 10 virtual machine before, it's really easy, and I'll just quickly show you how to do it. So in Google, search for Parallels Desktop, and click on that first link. There is a free trial you can use, and it lasts 14 days, so just download that. Go ahead, double click the installer and install the app. After it's installed, select install Windows, continue, and then select the image file we just downloaded from Windows ISO. If you have a license key, you can use that. If not, you can skip it. Continue, give it a name, and it will go ahead and create the virtual machine automatically in the background. And once that's done, boom, you're into Windows. Now we've got Windows installed, we want to drag those files into our virtual machine. Next up, we install that Win to USB app. And now we're ready to install Windows on our SSD. So plug it in. Parallels should give you a prompt as to where you want to connect your SSD, either Mac or Windows. I'm going to select Windows 10. If for some reason it doesn't give you that prompt, you can go into Devices, USB, and select your USB drive from there. Mine's already ticked, so Windows has it detected. If for some reason your SSD isn't detected, you can also go into this utility and just make sure it's connected on your system. Sometimes you may have to reformat it over in this utility. And you know what? I'm going to do that right now just to show you how it's done. So I've unplugged it from Windows. I've gone into this utility. And you can always try using first aid or erasing it as a standard XFAT format. And that's usually the most compatible. Hit erase and it will completely wipe out your drive. So back over in Windows, I'm going to select Devices and the SSD again. Now I'll click on the Find icon and select that ISO of Windows we just downloaded. I'm going to use Windows 10 Home because I'm using the free version of Win2 USB and that one's free, but you can always upgrade later once you have Windows installed. Now I select the Destination SSD and it will ask me if I want to keep the partition or format it. I'm going to go and use GBT for UEFI. So it's created a 100 megabyte EFI partition and the remainder goes to Windows, 1.7 terabytes. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna click next and it's gonna go ahead and start installing Windows all on the SSD for me. This process does take a while, so be a bit patient, but around 10 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. And that is that, it's now installed. So hit exit, yep, goodbye. Go into Windows Explorer, select Win to USB, and that is our SSD. I'm just gonna drag in the Windows support folder so we can install the bootcamp drivers once Windows is set up. Close down Parallels, hit the Apple menu, and select Restart. 
Now we're just gonna be booting into recovery mode because on these MacBook Pros with T2 chips, they actually don't allow you to boot via an SSD. So just restart your system and hold down Command R and then after a while, it's gonna start loading up into recovery. Once booted in, you wanna go into utilities and startup security utility. <sighs> Mac OS T2, it's a bit uh, colorful, let's just say that. Now you're in this menu, I tend to put my computer to medium security because I don't like T2 too much. However, um, the main one you wanna change is switch it from disallow booting from external media to allow booting from external media. Close it down, Apple menu, restart, except this time, you wanna hold down the option key and we're gonna be doing this when we see the Apple logo. Once the boot manager appears, you wanna go ahead and select EFI boot and that is the SSD. Just before I do this, I'm gonna unplug all my USBs because I don't wanna confuse Windows when it's installing. I like to install the drivers for everything once I've got Windows set up and up and running. If I boot, let's go. For some reason, Windows doesn't boot, just restart your computer and try again. Windows will reboot halfway through and you'll just need to hold down the option key and boot via the EFI once again. If you miss it, just hit restart. And once again, hold down the option key and select EFI boot again and it will continue. Now this is actually the fun part because Windows doesn't have drivers for the keyboard and trackpad, you're gonna need an external keyboard and even a wireless one works. So just plug that in. And there you go. So I'm in Australia network. I'm gonna say I don't have internet. Disable, 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 disable. There you go, Windows is up and running. So I'm gonna go into my Windows Explorer and go into the C drive, Windows support, bootcamp, and then set up. Next, accept, install. This will go ahead and install all the drivers for my trackpad, my keyboard, my graphics driver, and all that kind of stuff. For some reason, my computer stalls on Apple USB virtual host controller, so just go ahead and restart it. Restart anyway. And it will still function well. It's just uh, one of those things in the world you have to deal with. And if your computer takes too long to restart, just turn it off and turn it back on again. And select an EFI boot. However, now that we've got our drivers for our keyboard, we no longer need our external keyboard. And there you go, that is it. Windows running off that USB drive. You can go ahead and log in online because your Wi-Fi drivers are up and running, your keyboard, your trackpad, Everything good in the world is working. I'm just gonna go ahead and do some extras. For example, I'm gonna plug in my eGPU and install the drivers. For this, I'll need to log into Wi-Fi and just jump into AMD's website to get the latest drivers for my eGPU. And if I boot. Now, sometimes when you're installing eGPU drivers, your screens go black, and for that, you just need to shut down the system, restart it, and it should work on the next boot. And just select continue with your external keyboard. One more tip, if you do plug in an eGPU, your MacBook Pro's internal display won't render anything. To get something on the screen here, you'd have to go into Device Manager and right-click Radeon Pro 555X and select uninstall device. This will revert the drivers to Microsoft Basic Renderer, which means you won't get super fast graphics using the DGPU. However, it will allow you to use multiple displays. The negative of this is if you restart your system without an eGPU plugged in, 
it will still use that Microsoft Basic renderer and you'll lose the 555X graphics. You need to decide if you need the multiple displays or if you sometimes want advanced graphics when you're out and about. That's your decision right there. Now, to get back into macOS, you can't do the usual go to restart in macOS. What you have to do instead is shut the system down, unplug the SSD, force the shutdown by holding the power button, and then turn the system back on. So after a Microsoft Windows automatic repair, Windows tends to get into a restart loop, constantly restarting back into Windows. So to get out of that, I unplug my SSD and I force shut down and restart it. And then macOS will pick up and start it from scratch. Now, the reason why this boot loop occurs is because if you go to system preferences and startup disk, you will find that after a repair, Windows sets the boot disk to be the SSD. So to get Mac to boot to the drive you want all the time, you just select the macOS partition. And now your MacBook will know to always boot into Mojave. So I'm just gonna hit restart. And even with the SSD plugged in, it's gonna boot back into Mojave. And if you wanna get back into Windows, you hit restart, hold down option. and select EFI boot. As we set Mojave to be the startup disk, now when we restart from Windows, it's gonna defaultly reboot into Mac. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this guide. I'm gonna also throw in one more suggestion, and that is this call app called WinClone. It's a paid piece of software, but the cool thing about this guy is you can actually create an image from a volume. So you can go ahead and select the SSD that we just created, Win to USB, save the image, and it will make a complete backup of our Windows installation. So if for any reason we lose our SSD or uh, we trash our Windows, we can actually restore that image back on the Windows USB. And that's it. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below, and I hope you enjoy your Windows 10 USP experience. <laughs>